I think we lose sight of that a lot. We lose our attitude of gratitude. And we forget the fact that God hand chose us, pulled us out of the pit, and gave us a life of freedom from sin and death. We get so caught up in our circumstances and, and our lives and the things that are going on, we lose sight of the fact that we have been rescued. There's so many out there that are sick, that are dying, that are in bondage, that are being sacrificed, that are being tortured, that are being raped and murdered. And we grumble and complain about the things that we go through in our lives, and we have been given eternal life. So we got to make sure and maintain that attitude of gratitude. Amen? Amen. Never forget where you came from. Hallelujah. <clears throat> My name is Jason Roman. I've, uh, I've been a part of Total Freedom Program, True Ministries, for about four years. Um, God snatched me up, pulled me out of the pit, and delivered me to this place. Um, I was looking at a lot of time in prison, and was trying to escape prison and signed up to come to this place while I was in jail and uh, didn't realize God had a plan for me. I had a nine-month plan when I got here. I was going to finish the program in nine months, go on with my life. God had other plans. How many of you know God's plans are a whole lot better than our plans? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, glory. Hallelujah. We're going to talk tonight about perfect surrender. That place, that sweet place of perfect surrender. Where nothing matters but him. Nothing else matters but him. <clears throat> Practice of denying human nature will position us to live a life in perfect surrender. And the divine nature will take over. When the divine nature takes over, it will bring you to a place where denying human nature becomes natural. Everybody understand what human nature is. Human nature is the life of bondage and torment, the sin, the lust, the deception we were caught up in out in the world. Here in this place, we learn to deny ourselves from that and to seek the kingdom of God first. Let's turn to Matthew 16, 24. <clears throat> We've heard this scripture a whole lot. And we know that this is the formula to serve in the kingdom of God. Everybody there? Please read along with me. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Something that's really powerful here is it says, anyone who desires to come after me. So we first must start with a desire, amen? But denying yourself... Denying the human nature, denying, denying the things that we are used to coming into agreement with, it is, a, it is something that we must practice. You don't learn how to deny yourself completely the first day you desire to deny yourself. Amen? It is an ongoing journey. It is, a, it is something we must practice. It is something that we must train our minds to do. The enemy is constantly bombarding us with our past. He's constantly coming against us with the things from our past, with people around us, with stuff that we're dealing with and we're going through. And it's not till we come to the realization that this is, a, this is a process. It is a process of learning to retrain your mind in, into a place of the divine nature taking over. As you deny human nature, the divine nature begins to take over. So we must practice this. Let's go to John 3, 5. With what we're taught here in this place, there's a place in the spirit that God is calling each one of us to, to where 
we move with the Spirit. We are so in tune with the Spirit that we move with Him. We're flexible. We naturally become willing to deny ourselves. We naturally respond instead of react. But it's a process. This says, John 3, 5. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. When I read this, um, the Lord showed me something. He gave me a vision. I saw a man standing um, out in the open somewhere, and I saw the enemy. He was throwing, like, it looked like little Velcro balls, and it would say offense and rejection and bitterness and resentment. And as he would throw the balls, it would stick to the man. And what the Lord spoke to me when I saw that was he said that so many of my people live like this, where they're not in tune with my spirit enough, so everything that the enemy throws at them, it sticks to them. And they begin to harbor that stuff. They begin to live in it. And he said that he's calling his people to a place in unity with his spirit where nothing can touch them. And after he said that to me, I began to see, everybody seen that movie, The Matrix? I know you've been around this ministry long enough. You've definitely seen the movie, The Matrix. You know the scene where at the end of the movie where Neo is like dodging the bullets. He's moving faster than sound. And he's dodging bullets like crazy. The Lord said, that's, that's where I want to bring my people. That's where I see my people. But it takes commitment, it takes desire, and it takes discipline. It takes seeking. It takes denying yourself, denying your human nature, and moving into that place of perfect surrender where the divine nature takes over. See, when you get to a place of denying your human nature, and it be, you, you practice it so much, you make mistakes, but you dust yourself off and you get back up and you try again. So as you continue this process of practicing denying your human nature, you enter into that place of perfect surrender where the divine nature takes over. When the divine nature takes over, there's no longer an option to react. Does everybody understand that? When you practice denying yourself over a period of time, you perfect it. You get into that place of perfect surrender where the divine nature is now battling on your behalf. So where you naturally would react now you naturally choke reaction and wait for response. And that is where God is calling his people, to where we are flexible, where we move with the Spirit, we move where the Spirit goes, we move where he is leading us and guiding us. We no longer move with ourselves, we no longer move with the fulfillments and desires of this world, but we move with him. No matter what the cost, no matter how we feel, no matter what it looks like, no matter what we see, we are completely unified with him and in tune with him. And this is the desire he has, but it takes work, it takes discipline, it takes pressing in. So let's go to Philippians 4 8. We're going to go over some things that, uh, areas where we need to practice. We need to practice to become perfected in this area of surrender and unity with the Holy Spirit. I tell you, I love this place. I love this ministry. I thank God every day that I have been brought to this place. There's so many other places out there, but there is nothing like total freedom. There's nothing like true ministries that I've ever seen in my life. What we get here is prime rib. We get 40 ounce T-bone steak. Every service, we are fed meat. There's nothing to spit out. So when we learn to practice what we learn here, you'll find that place of perfect surrender. Philippians 4.8. Everybody there? Hallelujah. Read along with me, please. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. 
the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. That is plain and simple. Do the things that you learn here. So many people struggle because they don't do what they have learned. They don't do what they've been taught. They don't practice denying themselves. They don't practice denying their human nature, and they wonder why they struggle. We are given every tool, every weapon, every word, every scripture. We are given everything we need here in this place to destroy Satan's kingdom, to walk in true freedom. We are given everything that we need here in this place to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be laying hands on the sick, to be casting demons out, to be ministering to people out there that are in need. We get so caught up in our own circumstances sometimes we forget the fact that we've been rescued to rescue. If we start practicing the things that we've learned here and we start doing the things that we've learned that we learn every Tuesday, every, every Sunday, you'd be amazed at what would happen. Don't take for granted the stuff you're learning. Do not take for granted everything that you've been given. Everybody in this place is accountable for what they hear every week. You're accountable for it. God is counting on us to be out there and to deliver the word that we learn here, deliver it to his people out there that are in need. Amen. So don't get caught up in yourselves. We must continue practicing to deny our human nature, to come into agreement with our feelings and not fulfill the will of God. We must fulfill the will of God. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 20. Everybody there? Amen. Amen. So it says, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tamar, which is in Engadi. Now this is powerful. It says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. How many times does fear attack us and the first thing we do is panic? That is our human nature. Our human nature has taught us when fear comes, when the voice of the stranger comes, we panic. We are called to seek the Lord. When those voices come, when those things come, when the enemy is attacking, when he's coming against us and trying to make us, or cause us to make a decision based on fear, based on anxiety, based on pressure, we have got to get to that place where we step back and we surrender to the Lord and we seek him. I see that Jehoshaphat and his people, they lived a life of surrender, amen? amen. They surrendered to the will of God. They surrendered to seeking the Lord and not seeking themselves. It says, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your, and in your presence. For your name is in the temple and cry, and cry out to you in our affliction. And you will hear and save. And now here are, are the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, 
the son of Matthia, Mathena, and Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. So we see that as you deny your human nature, you deny yourself and the attacks of the enemy, and you seek the Lord, you set yourself before the Lord when the voice of the stranger is attacking, you get into that place of perfect surrender, the divine nature fights for you. So many times we enter into battles that we're not being called to fight. We react to fear, we react to the voice of the stranger, we react to our feelings and what we're going through and what we see, and then we get our butts kicked. When you make decisions based on fear, you miss the counsel of the Lord. Amen. Jehoshaphat put himself before the Lord. He didn't react to fear. He, he stepped back. He, re, he waited for a response. And the Lord counseled him on what to do to overcome the enemy. Position yourselves. Stand still and see salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. And you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall, be pros and you shall prosper. When we obey, when we seek the Lord in these times, and we follow through with the counsel that the Lord is giving us, he will prosper us. Amen. And we know that this goes on to an area where the Lord has called them to battle. He has called them to worship for the battle. He calls them to worship. As they worship, it sets ambushes for their enemies. The enemies end up fighting against themselves. They go down there and they take all the spoil for themselves. So we need to completely understand that when we learn to deny our human nature and reaction to ourself, we position ourselves to seek the Lord and everything. He is setting us up for blessing. He is setting us up to be freed from hardship. Every time we make a decision based on our feelings, based on fear, we fall into condemnation, we fall into doubt, we fall into unbelief, we fall into stress, worry, and anxiety, and we miss the blessings the Lord's trying to get to us. It is critical that we practice these things. We must practice denying our flesh, denying ourself, denying the voice of the stranger, so that we can enter into a place of perfect surrender where the divine nature takes us over. We're going to go to Jude 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Amen. Praise God. It says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Are we his saints? Yes. Amen. So he's coming with us. To execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which they have com committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. How many of you know that grumbling and complaining quenches the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. We have been given life and life abundantly. But we, we get too caught up in grumbling and complaining about the things that we go through. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with. It is not any worse than the things that people are going through out there. He says, and they, they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of the, our Lord Jesus Christ and how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. 
who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. <clears throat> the unity the Holy Spirit is calling us into, the unity the Lord is calling us into, one of the most important and critical things that we have to grab hold of is praying in the Spirit. That is something that so many of us don't do enough of. Don't raise your hands, but how many of you spent an hour praying in the Holy Spirit in the past week? How many of you spent an hour praying in the Holy Spirit in a day? How many of you know that without praying in the Spirit, you don't see? You don't hear from God? You don't go deeper. Pastor did a teaching a couple weeks back that was called Secured Foundations. <clears throat> and one of the most powerful things that he said in that was the deeper you dig, the thicker your foundation. In order to get to that place of unity the Holy Spirit is calling us to, we have got to dig. Praying in the Spirit is one of the most powerful ways to dig and to grow. Praying in the Spirit does multiple things, but three of them. It brings you vision. It causes you to hear God, and it brings you divine connection to the throne room of God. When we maintain a life of praying in the Spirit, it builds up our most holy faith. You begin to see in the Spirit. You begin to see angels moving and working on your behalf. You begin to hear God clearly. You have a direct connection to the throne room of God. It grows you, it molds you, it trains you, and it perfects you. Without praying in the Spirit, we'll never reach a place of perfect surrender. It is one of the most effective and powerful tools that we have, and it is critical that we take it serious. I had a conversation with somebody about praying in tongues the other day, and um, we were both talking about it, and we were both talking about how we used to pray in the Spirit for two hours a day. And as soon as I said that, that I used to pray in the Spirit for two hours a day, immediately a, a sense of conviction came over me. And when I got off the phone, I had to repent. And I could not believe the fact that I was saying I used to do that as if for some reason I came to the realization that I didn't need to pray in the Spirit that much. And we were both talking on the phone. We were laughing because we're like, man, how stupid can we be and still breathe? We know this stuff. We practice this stuff. We saw the miracles that God was doing in our lives. We saw the, the growth. We saw the vision. We saw the, the word of God that was coming forth in our life, the blessings that were flowing. And we both stopped. So when that happened, I said, Lord, I repent, I turn, and it's time to get in the Spirit. There is a mighty storm that is over us right now. And from everything we're learning here, the storm is getting stronger. And without being connected and unified with the Spirit the way God is trying to get us positioned, you're going to get blown away. And it doesn't matter how long you've been connected to the Lord. It doesn't matter how long you've been around here. It doesn't matter what you know. Everybody's one decision away from falling off a cliff. And if you are not pressing in, if your foundation is not getting thicker, if you are not doing the things God's called you to do, you'll become a casualty. So take heed to what the Spirit is saying. Press into Him. Pray in the Spirit more. No matter how you feel, no matter what you think, no matter what you see, no matter what your circumstances, it's not about a feeling. And you may not see something right then. You may not see something happen a week from then. But what you pray in the Spirit today is building your future. Amen. So we live from the future. We sow today because we're going to reap later. Praying in the Spirit is warfaring on behalf of those that are out there sick, suffering, and dying. And we're called to battle. We're called to warfare. We're called to press in for those that are out there in need, to deny ourselves, and the warfare for them. Don't allow the attacks of the enemy to sway you from pressing in. He's here to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen? So we must press in and do our part to maintain. You know, it, it's, it's wild because people that practice witchcraft, people that practice Santeria and voodoo and black magic and all that stuff, these people are dedicated. 
They are dedicated. They'll stay up all night long praying against us. Most Christians will barely get up first thing in the morning in warfare and pray. If you don't want to be a casualty, press in. Press into the battle. It is real. It is not a game. Satan is out to kill us. He is out to take us out through addictions, through lust. And as soon as you think you're good and you got it, that's when he's going to pull the rug right out from underneath you. It doesn't matter who you are and what you think you know. Nobody, nobody is completely safe from what's going on out there. If you are not tied into the spirit, you can be pulled out. So we must maintain the anointing. We must maintain connection. We must maintain this process of denying our human nature so that we can live in perfect surrender to where reaction is not an option. Falling away is not an option. Decision making that will draw us back into the world is not an option. That is the place the Lord is calling us to. Amen? Amen. Where are we going here? Hallelujah. God is calling us to a place of unity with the Holy Spirit where we no longer react to human nature because the divine nature has taken over. There is a place of perfect surrender that God is trying to get us to, where the battle is no longer ours. We must maintain a level of connection with the Holy Spirit so the divine nature can take over. Human nature causes reaction. The divine nature causes response. When you are living in the divine nature, truth always overcomes fiery darts of the enemy. In this place of perfect surrender and unity with the Holy Spirit, there is no option to react because the divine nature won't allow it. 2 Corinthians 10. Hallelujah, everybody there? Amen. It says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beg you, that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we all know the battles in the mind, right? Amen. Amen. So where do you think is a great place to practice denying yourself? It starts in your mind. It starts with the thoughts the enemy sends. There are thoughts from our past. There are things that we enjoy. There are movies and foods and all kinds of stuff that we enjoy. But there's an area where God is pulling us away from that stuff to seek him. And everybody knows when the Lord's tugging on your heart. Everybody knows that the Lord is trying to draw them deeper. There's times when you want to go watch a movie, but you can sense the Lord is trying to pull you off somewhere because he's got something for you. But the enemy comes in and say, oh, no, don't worry about it. You need this. You need a break. You deserve a break. Go hang out. Go lay down. You've been working real hard. Kick your shoes off. Put the movie on. Grab you a piece of cake. Just enjoy yourself, man. You've been doing enough. You prayed a lot this morning. You're going to be okay. The area of unity with the Holy Spirit God is calling us to, that is a place where we need to deny ourselves. Now, I'm not saying never watch a movie again or take it easy or have a break or anything like that. But what I am saying is, is there are times when you all know God is calling you. And he is saying, hey, come here. I got something for you. Come on. Come spend some time with me. I want to show you something. There's a place that he's trying to bring us to, to where we are, we're married to him. You know, there's nothing else. We don't want to do the other things. When we hear that still small voice call, we're like, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to go get fed. Amen. I mean, that is where he's trying to get us. But our human nature is trying to stop us from doing that. Our old man is trying to prevent us from getting deep with him like that. Because the enemy is trying to knock us off our foundation. 
He doesn't want us to be held on tight to the Lord. He wants to take us out. He wants to kill us. He wants to steal from us. He wants to destroy the witness we've been. He wants to tear down everything God's been doing in our lives and everything that he's been doing with the witness through the healing and the ministry that he's done in our lives with our families, with the people around us, the people we've touched. He wants to pull that right out. So we have got to be faithful and disciplined in denying our human nature and falling into that place of sweet, perfect surrender in him where nothing else matters, not your wife, not your children, not your family, not your job. It's him, him, and him. God and God alone. Without that, when this storm comes, you're going to crumble. It is important that we seek him the way he is calling us to seek him. You cannot fake God out. You can't play games with God. You may fake people out, and you may think you're faking people out, but you're not getting over on them. You can't do it. You've been called at this appointed time, at this season, to dig deep, to go deep with him, to be a witness for him, to fall in love with him. What an honor and a blessing. The lives that we lived, the things that we did, the passes that we have, we have been handpicked from the king of the universe to be in this appointed place at this time and know his glory. How could we ever run from that? How can you turn your back on the love and the deliverance and the peace and the joy and the righteousness and the freedom that he's given you? Pay attention to what he's doing in your lives. It is critical right now. Amen? Amen. We're hearing so much, man, about all the crazy nonsense that's going on in the world, going on in the government, going on with the Luciferian agenda, worldwide, globally. It is chaotic out there. You know, we learn week in and week out about the heavy demonic activity. It's heavier than ever. The seducing spirits, the deceiving spirits, witchcraft, all the child sacrifice. I mean, everything that's going on right now, it is chaotic. It is crazy out there. And we have been handpicked to be set apart, to get built up on our most holy faith and go out there and fight for those that are in need. To hold back. We are the resistance to the enemy's kingdom. We are holding back the powers of darkness. Far be it that we do not fulfill our call. Take it seriously. Amen? Uh, where are we going? James 4, 6. I mean, doesn't it blow your mind that the creator of the universe picked us, cleaned us up, brought us to this place, taught us how to truly live a fulfilled life? I mean, what an honor, man. What a blessing. You know, you get to a place where it's like, who am I to deserve something like that? But we're his sons and daughters. And he loves us so much. James 4. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody there? All right. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Will the divine nature fight for you and warfare for you if you are full of pride? No. That is a place that we must come to is searching ourselves through and exposing our pride. Getting to a place of humbleness, getting to a place of walking in humility and loving kindness. Without it, you cannot submit to God. 
If you are not walking in humbleness, you cannot submit to God and you will not resist the devil. And you will live a life in human nature and serve in yourself and will become a casualty. <clears throat> it says, lack of denying human nature will put you in the danger zone. Humbling yourself is the key to surrendering to God, which will cause you to resist the devil. Psalm 127. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Everybody there? Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. <clears throat> this is a, a very critical area. One of the biggest parts of our human nature is control. We want to control everything. We want to control the outcome of our lives. We want to control the people around us. We want to control our children. We want to control what we wear. We want to control what we eat. <clears throat> if you are living a life of control, you will not live in perfect surrender. We have got to get to a place where we let go of everything. We let go of our kids. We let go of our wife. We let go of our husbands. We let go of our jobs. We let go of the people around us. And we work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. Let God do what he does, and we do what we do. One of the things I see with this whole, whole deal is um, when it comes to building the house. You know, anybody ever hire a contractor to, to come out to their house and fix something or, <clears throat> or build something? Um, you hire somebody to come work at your house because you don't know what you're doing. So you need an expert. You need a professional to build the part of your house. So you have this professional come out there, they show you the plans and everything, and you bring them in to build the house. Amen? You know, one of the things I used to fall into, I, I've done a lot of work in people's houses and stuff like that. You come into a house, somebody's called you and hired you to do a job, to build something, to fix something, and when you get there, you tell them your plan and you tell them all this stuff, you come out to do the job, and then they're trying to tell you how to do the job. They're trying to tell you what to use, how to build it, how to cut this, how to do this, how to do that. And the whole time I'm thinking, didn't you hire me to do this work? So many times we do that with God. Amen. We get to a place where we call on him because we know we need him. We know he is the expert in rebuilding our lives. But then we get to a place where it's like, ah, oh, I got it. I think we should do it this way. Maybe we should try it like this. I think this will work out. Let's, let's use this over here. And he gets to a place where he just steps back and says, go right ahead. When you fall on your face, give me a call. Amen. Amen. We have got to get to the understanding and knowing that we are worthless without him. We can do nothing without him. We have got to get into a place of surrender where we allow him to build the house completely. And it doesn't matter what we think we've learned or what we think we've come to grips with. We must maintain a place of knowing we are nothing without him. And unless he builds the house, unless he does the work, unless he sees it through, it's going to crumble. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that you're doing okay, that you can take back control. Because that's when he's got you. You realized you were in a place where you needed God. We have got to live in that place. Our human nature wants us to take control of everything. And we have to practice denying that. When you sense control, when you sense people around you that you are trying to control, and you sense things that you're trying to take back, we need to learn to recognize these things. We've got to train our minds to see the things that the enemy is trying to entangle us with to take back from God. So many times we want to give up this over here, but we want to hold on to this over here. We've got to let it all go. It's all got to go to him or our foundation is going to crumble. Amen? Amen. Matthew 7.24. <clears throat>
You know, and I see this here, I see this as a promise, a promise from the Lord. Everybody there? Matthew 6, what did I say, 724? Amen. It says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, and does them, and practices them, and lives them, amen, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall." Hallelujah. Matthew 6, We've got to let them build the house. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Matthew 6, 25. Everybody there? Hallelujah. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. All right, we can go home now. Amen. We're good to go. If you live that, praise God, you, you'll be blessed. Therefore, I say, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet are, that your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his, to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith! Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble." This is an area where so many people that are living a life of surrender and have come into a place of perfect surrender go back into survival. The enemy comes with worry. He comes with doubt. He comes with fear. He comes with all kinds of antagonizing spirits and voices to get us into a place where we start to worry about finances. We start to worry about our marriages. We start to worry about our children. We start to worry about our lives, our jobs. And they fall out of surrender and start to try and grab a hold of things. So many times we, we get to a place of letting go and then we try and take it all back. And we lose sight of the freedom there was and knowing that God is going to take care of everything we need. And we fall back into a place of trying to provide for ourselves. The most powerful thing about staying in perfect surrender is when you're living a life of perfect surrender and the divine nature is fighting for you, God maintains everything. When you fall into worry, stress, and anxiety, and you start thinking about money, you start thinking about jobs, you start thinking about your marriage, you start thinking about your children and all that stuff, and you go back out there and you establish a plan and you, you're going to do this, this, and this, and you go try and execute your plan, then you maintain it. Amen. There have been decisions that I have made that I made out of fear. I didn't wait on the Lord. I didn't seek the Lord. 
and now I have to maintain them. I don't like maintaining them. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to maintain these things. Wait on the perfect will of God for your life. Surrender all control to him. And when he brings it, it'll be perfect and complete. You won't have to do anything to maintain it. He will bring it the way it needs to bring. He will bring your children back when it's time for your children to come back. He will bring your family back together when it's time for your family to come back together. When you move before God, you're working against yourself. All you're doing is setting yourself up for failure. It is critical that we wait on the Lord to move. We stay in that place of surrender. We give it all up to him. We trust that he knows exactly what we need when we need it. And we let him do what he does. Amen? Amen. Philippians 4.4. 4. <clears throat> And understand that you're going to make mistakes along the way. You're going to make bad decisions. It is critical that you realize that this is a process. A process. And to those that love him, all things work to the good. To those that truly come to him with a heart of repentance, all things work to the good. Don't allow the enemy to come in with doubt and condemnation and beat you up when you make decisions that are displeasing to the Lord. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall short. You're going to have problems. You're going to have issues. You're going to learn the hard way sometimes. But if you are truly seeking him with everything that's within you, if you are truly fighting to deny your human nature and to practice righteousness, God is going to take you to a place of unity with his spirit that is so amazing, it'll blow you away. And you will get to a place as you continue to practice denying yourself, denying your human nature, and denying the things that you feel and the things that you want to do. As you practice this, you will get to a place where those decisions become impossible for you to make. It will not even be a thought for you to choose going back to the old. It will not even be an option. No matter how you feel, no matter how hard it is. <clears throat> it's like I see pastor. All right? So pastor's been doing this for like 20-something years. <clears throat> but it took practice for him to get to a place that he's at today. It took time. It took decisions that he made. Some of them were good. Some of them were probably the wrong ones. What did he do? He repented. He turned. And he didn't do it again. And now he is in a place where there is no option to go back. There is no option to turn away from what God's calling him to do. There's no option to allow the enemy access and prevent him from fulfilling the perfect will of God. That is where God is trying to get us. That is where he is bringing us to. He is calling each and every one of us to that place to where there is no option to go back. Not fulfilling the perfect will of God is not an option. And he is calling you right now in this place to press into him, to warfare in the spirit, to pray in the spirit, deny yourself and seek him more. Go deeper. You know, Pastor was talking about the planes of reality. Every one of us has a level of surrender that we are already in. It took surrender to get here tonight. Amen? <clears throat> but what level do you want to be at? Those planes of reality, we need to be desiring to be in the plane of reality where God is and what God sees. to where we see more in the spirit than we see in the natural. That is my prayer every day. Lord, let me see in the spirit more than I see in the natural. I want to walk around, go to my job, and see angels everywhere. I want to see spiritual things everywhere I go. I don't like seeing things in this world. <laughs> I love seeing spiritual things. And that's the place we need to get to. That's where he's trying to bring us to, to where we are completely unified with him. We are married to him. And it doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. We are completely sold out to him. And he is there warfaring for us. Amen. What did I say? Philippians 4.4. 4. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Philippians 4.4. 4. Yeah. 
Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. Again. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. No matter how you feel. My back's hurting. Oh, my back's hurting. What am I going to do? My back's hurting. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. It doesn't matter how you feel. So many times we get caught up in aches and pains and tiredness and all this stuff, and we begin to grumble and complain, and we quench the Holy Spirit. We need to start practicing decreeing the truth. No matter how bad I'm in pain, no matter how tired I am, no matter what I'm going through, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. These are things we got to practice. We've got to retrain our minds into thinking this way. The problem with, with a lot of people is, is they'll grumble and complain about a hurt or a pain or something they're going through or whatever. In a week, it's 10 times worse. Amen. I guarantee you, in a week, you start decreeing the truth over your body, it's going to be 10 times better. Amen? We've got to start practicing denying our human nature, which is to grumble and complain, come into agreement with how we feel, and cry on people's shoulders and the woe is me and pity parties and all that nonsense and get to a place where we take dominion over every area of our lives. And the only way to do that is through practicing denying your human nature where you fall into a place of perfect surrender to the king and he begins to warfare for you and trains you up to a place where you don't want to grumble and complain anymore because you know without a doubt in your mind you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. You are made new. You are Covered by his blood. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I, say, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Anxiousness is a... A big deal. And one of the most powerful things here, it says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That means when anxiousness comes, when fear comes, when worry comes, you step back. You stop. You don't do nothing. You move out of the circumstance you're in, and you seek the Lord. You press into Him. And it says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You practice denying these things, and the divine nature will take you over. The divine nature will fight for you. The divine nature will guard you and protect you and bring you into a place of peace. But you must first stop and seek the Lord. Amen? <clears throat> We're going to close at 1 Timothy 4.1. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the blood of Jesus, the covering of our Father. It is God's nature, the divine nature, the fruits of the Spirit. That is the divine nature that is working on our behalf when we get to this place of perfect surrender. <clears throat> 1 Timothy 4.1 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. We're seeing this go on big time right now. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. <clears throat> We are seeing so much of this right now. Those that were living a life of surrender and fell back into a life of survival and are now back out there in the world. There are people all around us that are falling off their foundation. They are getting swept up in the storm and they are getting pulled out of position. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to be a casualty. We have got to dig. We have got to press in. 
We have got to warfare. We have got to stand up and be the resistance that God's called us to be. Take heed to the call that he is putting on you right now. Do the things that you learn in this place. Nobody here has an excuse. Nobody. We all learn the same stuff. And it is everything you need to overcome the enemy. It is everything you need to kick the devil's butt. So loose yourself from the wimpiness and step into the boldness of God and get filled with his fire. Press into the spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and we bless you. We thank you for this word you brought forth today, Lord. We ask that it grow and bear fruit for your glory. We apply the blood of Jesus to every person in this place, Lord. And I ask that you cause us to stay thirsty and hungry for more of you, Lord. I ask that you put a passion, a thirst, a desire within each, each, within each person here in this place and those that are listening to this <clears throat> and bring them to a place where they will not rest until they know you in this way, Lord. I ask that you cause us to draw near to you so that you can draw near to us, to abide in you so that you can abide in us, Lord. Cause us to work and practice And go through this process of denying ourselves, denying our human nature, so that you can take us over completely as your temples, Lord. Position us to where it's no longer we that live, but you that live in us and through us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.